Life in Christ is good. Christ loves you all. You are Creation 13. I'm Ambassador. I'm Starseed. And today I want to talk to you about um, the story of Cain. Basically the mark of Cain. Um, I ended up watching, well, I've been watching Supernatural since it started. And the, the, the season that just got over was quite interesting. The past couple seasons they've been talking about um, the mark of Cain. Um, the main characters names are Sam and Dean and the oldest brother oldest brother is named Dean and uh, he ended up getting the mark of Cain um, and it and it, it got passed down from the previous person who had the mark of Cain because that's it's a curse and the only way you can pass it it has to pass to another person it can't just be taken away unless you do this spell which they ended up doing um, with a consequence so basically um, the youngest brother um, which is named Sam which could be referred to as Abel um, found out how to get rid of the Mark of Cain so um, they found out that if they got rid of the Mark of Cain it would uh, open the bottomless pit um, basically creating chaos on this world um, basically the representation of the Cain, the the mark of Cain, um, also represents the the mark of Satan or the entrapment of Satan, um, or Yahweh Bethamot, or yeah Bethamot, um, El, E L, so on and so forth, the God of the Earth. So when that mark of Cain gets released, it opens a bottomless pit, and I found this interesting. And with this mark of Cain, you can also take it to Revelations, where it talks about the mark of the beast. Um, if you do the original translations and you read in it, there is no 666 in there. That number does not exist in there. It was created in America. Um, so do research on that. But the mark of the beast is in there in the original translation. So the mark of the beast got with the mark of Cain. And if you read the mark of Cain, each of his generation is going to be cursed with that mark of the beast, the mark of Cain. Um, and that goes into Abraham and his cursed um, bloodline as well, uh, which is the royal bloodline, which is represented um, with the uh, USA flag, the blue and the red. Um, you can do research on that. Uh, so anyways, um, that's basically basically the mark of Cain is the beginning of the curse you know Adam and Eve uh, began the curse but the mark happened with Cain um, so anyways it was very rather interesting so anyways with the last episode of Supernatural um, they got the mark of Cain off and therefore the abyss opened up and chaos started appearing on there um, that whole locust uh, deal started happening so um, I found it rather interesting and it does make a lot of sense you know because we always talk about and how the seal when the seal is broken chaos is going to happen so if you put the mark of Cain together with the mark of the beast you got something going on there. so you know it's just putting the pieces of the puzzles puzzle together so anyways, um, I'm going to read this little thing. I'm going to kind of skim through it. Um, I tried to make this video a couple times, and I just I end up getting into too much detail. So I'm going to try to skim through this, and hopefully it makes sense. So um, basically what I'm going to read here is written by a guy named Alfred Edersham or Edersham, something like that. Um, his viewpoint, his further insight on the character of Cain. Um, and he entitles it the first false messiah so um, you know you're fully aware that Cain is the oldest brother to Ad or the oldest son the first son to Adam and Eve and the interesting thing here is that he talks about and how Eve thought that Cain was um, the returning messiah which I find it interesting because I don't ever remember reading that Adam and Eve was told of the Messiah at the beginning um, so that's something I need to research on so anyways um, with this Cain um, in the east part of the world um, they use names 
um, as a symbolism of something, um, which is very true. Like in Japan and stuff, you know, their names represent something. So Cain's name translates into gotten or acquired. And Abel's name uh, translates into breath or fading away. So since she thought her firstborn son was the Messiah, she named him as gotten or acquired, meaning that she thought that she required um, the Messiah, which is interesting. And she, and it points out, you know, on how she acquired it from Yahweh, which also is Bahimon, um, Satan, El, E L, um, the God of the Earth. Um, because, like I said, in the Bible, it tells you that God walked among humans, so therefore the God of the Earth. Um, and she thought that the fulfillment of the promise was her son Cain. And but later she found out, you know, when she had her second son, uh, she named him Abel, which is breath or fading away, which means that she kind of gave up hope that Cain was the Messiah, and maybe she thought Abel was going to be. Um, or her hope for the Messiah faded away because of Abel. Um, but it also represents breath, which can be spiritual energy um, or Epsu energy. So hidden symbolisms right there. Um, and also the fulfillment also was um, hinted at the bruise to the head of the serpent, which is in the Bible as well. And to me, the bruise on the head of the serpent represents um, the veil lifting, you know, your pineal gland, the veil lifting, you know, making everything be aware. And serpent, there's a lot of hidden symbolisms with the serpent. Um, it can be the Kundalini rising, it can be your reptilian side of the brain, and it can also represent um, your spiritual energy growing within you, feeling like serpents. It can also be DNA. And to me, DNA makes more sense because. Um, your DNA spirals like a serpent. Um, it literally looks like a serpent spawning around. It coils around as well. Um, many hint symbolisms behind that. So basically, this tells you that you know when the Messiah or the Christ return, um, everybody's going to get a bruise, or most people are going to get a bruise on their head because of the serpent, because of the Messiah or the Christ. So, anyways, I'll skim through here. All right, when Yahweh, God, Satan, El, whatever, showed respect to the offering of Abel, properly marketing his acquaintance, but someone outward and visible, blah, 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 blah. All right, um, and this is interesting, too, is how um, Abel and Cain both gave sacrifices. Well, Cain sacrificed the fruits, um, the fruits and vegetables of the land, right which was nature he gave this to the god of the earth well abel killed the firstborn of of the cattle you know whether it be sheep or cows or whatever he killed um and gave the firstborn of everything so the fruit of the earth and the vegetables and stuff was not good enough for this god, for this earth god. The earth god wanted the firstborn of every child of the cattle, of the livestock. And the Yahweh, or the god, um, was pleased of the bloodshed that was sacrificed to him instead of, of nature. Um, I already read that it contradicts itself right there, which is quite interesting. And Cain became furious of this. You know, he was just like, what? I spent all my time, you know, planting the seeds and, you know, acquiring all the fruits of his labor. And the God um, enjoyed the slaughter of the firstborns. Uh, hidden symbolism there and it's pretty jacked up man um, so therefore in a way you know Cain could have been considered um, the start of where we should have been but Abel it, it contradicts itself so bad 
It really does. So you really need to look that Cain was actually, his sacrifice was actually good and what is needed for this earth for transformation. But because um, they were sacrificing to the God of the earth, the God of the earth loves bloodshed and um, flesh. And it, it pleases to that because that's where they wanted the earth to go. And it's going to contradict itself again, which is interesting. So just pay attention to that. Um, so, you know, Cain became very jealous because the God of the earth loved Abel more than Cain. So he wanted to meet his brother and ended up killing his brother for some odd reason. And it, it doesn't make any sense to me why, why Cain would kill his brother Abel um, because the God did not please to him. It doesn't make any sense here. So there's definitely some kind of hidden symbolism behind this. You know, this was a, this was supposedly called the first death of a human um, because obviously they were killing animals anyways, but um, the first death of humans. So when the God of the Earth found out about this, uh, he banished. Uh, well, actually, hold on here. Okay, I, I was trying to say because there's many gods that are talked about in the Bible. So we got Yah Yahweh, Yahweh, Y H Y A H V E H was in the first one talking about the fulfillment that Eve thought. Cain was well later down here it says Yahovah which is Y E H O V A H so it changes itself and you'll notice this in the Bible as well so two different gods were talked about so basically Satan and then um, the other God and I think that's where it, uh, which is why it contradicts itself because they were talking to one God, not the other. So there was the God that desired flesh and blood and flesh, and the other God desired the fruits and vegetables. And I, then this is where it contradicts itself. I hope this makes sense, but this is this is why everybody gets confused about everything because it always contradicts itself. So there's two gods here. That you can read and you can even do research on this even in your Bible you'll notice that there's different gods in there which you'll see Lord and God and so on and so forth so the God that loves fruits and veggies banished Cain because he killed his brother okay so he cursed Cain because he killed his brother and he and the ground was cursed because of it and he complained that the punishment was too harsh too severe still repentant he professed to be fearful that someone might kill him just as he killed okay so God so the God that um, likes fruits and veggies or whatever was fearful that someone might try to kill him because of vengeance so therefore I just create that vengeful act so to prevent this uh, Yahweh set a mark on Cain setting him apart so no one would do this so that mark uh, made it so that no one would kill him unless they be cursed so thus Cain was the first man in the world to depart from the way of the living of the gods because there's more than one God and to literally go his own way so he was kicked out and banished. So not only was Adam and Eve banished, but then Cain was banished as well. Um, so with him being banished, he created his own way of life. Um, in the scriptures with the way of evil, the way of spiritual ruin, Cain became the first man who would be the son of politician. So Cain ended up becoming the first person of... Uh, perdition son of hell or son of doom uh, which I don't agree with that because it doesn't really justify that that's just the interpretation of him um, because 
you know, it may have been the first perceived murder in the Bible. Does that make you, it makes you sinful, basically. All right, so anyways. Uh, so Cain basically started his own um, relief structure. Um, still professing to worship the authority, which Lord, like I said again, is authority. He did so in his own way and began the practice of using man-made idols. You know, basically, you know, you got, they, people always feel they need to have some kind of idol to worship, uh, to represent God, um, because, you know, Adam and Eve had their God of the earth, but he was banished by that God, which, it's hard to say if he, if that God of the earth was on the earth at that time or not, don't know, but they created the false idols. Um, and the first such idols were figures of a man and a female deity. So the first such idols were figures of a man and a female deity, which could have represented Cain and his wife, with whom he built his first city and established his first government. So government has always been around, and I'll talk about that here in another video. Um, but, you know, if you start a town, you're going to start your own rules and structures and so forth. Um, the first kings of the earth were Cain and his wife, because um, you got to think that, you know, Cain's offspring spread out um, because you know Abel died, um, and Adam and Eve also had other offsprings, but they kind of stayed in their own area. Well, Cain's uh, bloodline expanded outwards. Um, basically, that's what it's referring to. So, because of the belief of Cain. Um, their religion spread through. So there, you already had two differences of religion, Adam and Eve's religion and Cain's religion. He established his own religious empire with central earthly services, compelling tithes to be paid by his worshippers, taxes, creating lavish temples, basically uh, rituals, uh, male and female prostitution, um, a lawless, basically it was a lawless structure, um, forgetting the universe's laws, um, which the universe's laws weren't really talked about either. Um, again, contradicts itself. The origins of the worship of the Canaanites, blah, blah, blah. Um, Cain is firstborn, no doubt, had been told many times by Eve of the promise of her seed who would bruise the head of the serpent and bring deliverance to the human race that had been banished from Eden. Her stories and the thought fired her imagination, and he thought, in part because she also believed that the promise was fulfilled. He also, you know, because she thought he was a Messiah, he also thought the same thing. So therefore, he still believed, believed that he was the Messiah. And we go through this now, that a lot of people think that they are the Messiah, which Messiah represents the anointed one, which also represents Christ. Christ is the anointed one or the anointed ones. And like I've talked about in my videos, Christ is an energy source. Um, so anyways, this, this shows you or tells you, you know, that, that, People keep thinking that the Messiah is going to be a physical form, when in actuality, the Christ is an energy form. It's an energy essence that only you can require if you unlock it. Um, and that's something you have to do research on. Um, pride goes before I fall. Pride goes before I fall, Solomon wrote. And Cain never learned the values of humility. All right, so Cain never learned the values of humility, meaning you know, the basic structures of life and how we we're supposed to live. You know, he had it at first, but because of his anger, his pride, his rage, well, it says it right here, because of his his perceived self-esteem, his pride, his self-assertion, um, he was blinded by his own uh, deceit, his own desires. So it says in here, 
not for him was the path of humility meekness and reference to the god of the earth he would never let anybody walk over him or take an insult or allow anyone to uh pesmerk his imagined honor because he thought he was honored and he still thought he was a chosen one thus in every aspect cain rejected the ways of of adam and eve's god and embraced the ways of the other god which is satan but like i said it contradicts itself so you can't really say adam and eve had the true god and then cain had the other god it contradicts itself so anyways um so he embraced the so i'm going to say he embraced the sinful ways of the earth um who became his real god you know sin became his god the god of this world um he was the first the pathfinder of those of whom it is written the wrath of god is being revealed from uh the universe heaven represents the universe from the heaven against all the godliness and wickedness of man who suppress the truth by their wickedness since what may be known about god is plain to them because you know humanity as a whole don't truly understand what um god is all they know is by um, references and books um since since what may be known about God is plain to them, because God has been made plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, because invisible qualities means there should be no idol because it is invisible, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood by what is made, so that men are without excuses. You know, there is no excuse for what man do, does, you know, God is, or the energy of the universal God is invisible. So there is absolutely no excuse as to why you are having idols and worshiping and so on and so forth. There's no excuse for it. For although they knew God, they neither glorified Him as God nor gave thanks to Him. By the, their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like mortal men and birds and animals and reptiles. Which, you know, you also look at throughout throughout the world, you see um, the many idols that were represent, represented. Um, You got a shim, you got um, Egyptian gods, you got all these kings and queens that made statues on themselves to be worshipped. You know, those idols were made, those statues were made to be worshipped. That's why it's important to get rid of them. You know, people are always like, oh, why are they destroying this artifact? Why are they destroying this artifact? Um, it's not needed. Um, now, is it um, erasing history? In a way it is, but in a way it's not, because you really want to get rid of of all the all the um, symbolisms of man. You want to get rid of that because it's 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 clouding your judgment. You know, all these statues and uh, images on walls, all that are um, are clouding your judgment, clouding the true message of the. Um, universal uh, God or the um, universal laws of creation uh, the laws of Kemet the laws of Maya um, which are the universal laws um, and how are they the universal laws you just have to um, read them to truly understand that it all those laws are made um, without without judgment without um, uh, pride, gain, um, things of that nature. That's why the laws of Kemet, the 40 laws of Kemet, or Maya, are the universal laws because it doesn't have to do with pride or gain or idols or anything of that nature. 
uh, no killing of any kind whatsoever. Um, very interesting stuff. Um, so let's see here. So for although they knew God, uh, they never glorified Him. So on and so forth because of the images. Therefore God gave them over in the sinful. Therefore God gave them their desires, their sinful nature, uh, over their hearts. So the hearts became hard, hardened by their own personal desires. And this is where things get um, interesting, and I'll probably get blasted by certain people who watch my videos. Um, but it's very important to hear this. Therefore, God gave them over into their own sinful desires of their hearts, um, to sexual impurities, um, therefore degrading their own bodies, because your body is your own temple. But um, if you go by your own pride and lust, your body becomes an object. It degrades your own personal uh, body and what your body represents. So they exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshipped and served created things rather than the Creator who is forever praised. So therefore, it means that they, that they chose their their own heart's desires of what they proclaim God to be um, saying oh my heart feels right about this that I need to do this they they look towards that instead of their spirit your heart your your own selfish desires is separate from your spirit and this is why it's important to or your soul excuse me your soul not your spirit spirit is energy your soul is the essence of you um, so a lot of people even today follow their hearts instead of their soul um, they are separate and that's something that you really have to look at um, even with the many gods in the Bible you have two voices um, which one are you gonna listen to are you gonna listen to your heart or are you gonna listen to your soul um, you always want to listen to your soul over your heart and how can you dis can you distinguish both of them that's where you're gonna have to discover and the best way to do that is to see if you are going against the laws of nature. If you're going against the laws of nature, and if you're going against the the laws of the forty laws of Mayat, the forty laws of Kemet, then you're going towards the heart. So if you're going against that, you're going towards the heart. Now, if you follow follow the forty laws of Mayat and Kemet, and you go with nature and follow nature then you're listening to your soul and this is very key important thing to realize because um, this is where a lot of people are failing to realize this so um, so because of this because humans decide to follow their heart instead of their soul um, God gave them over to the shameful lust um, even their ex their women exchange natural relations for unnatural ones okay women exchange men and women because it, it says the same thing men and women exchange their natural relations for unnatural so women went with women men went with men therefore it's unnatural and that's something that people keep getting keep blasting people for oh no my heart was born this way I was born to to you know, I had the desire to be with another man, I had the desire to be with another woman. Well, that's the mark of Cain, and that's why your heart is is going to that. You are going by your heart instead of by your soul. And that's something that I'm sure I'll get blasted bad by, but it makes total sense. You know, that if you go by your own shameful lust, it's by the heart and not by the soul. So, men and women began to go against the law laws because you can't make a baby a man and a man can't make a baby and a woman and a woman can't make a baby so it, it goes against nature um, so therefore it is the lustful laws of humans the laws of the heart um, so that's that's something that is in the Bible itself and people keep wanting to make their own laws laws of the universal God they keep wanting to make laws that's why they keep changing the laws here the laws keep changing because they're changing man's laws um, because that's what they're doing they're the mark of Cain's the mark of Cain 
um, the curse of Cain is continuing forward and that's what you're seeing you know that's what you're seeing with you know men with men and women with women because it's 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 still being generated and created Sodom and Gomorrah is happening now the king of Babylon is in the big cities New York Los Angeles um, Washington DC Chicago the big cities you know and where do they have all these um, men men relationships and women women relationships um, their uh, parades and stuff to um, worship these things is in the big cities is in the new Babylon all those big cities are the city of Babylon um, Sodom and Gomorrah just gotta do your research and put the pieces of the puzzle together so you can blast me all you want for that but it's not natural if you can't make a baby you know if you're a couple and you can't make a baby you know in the natural aspect then it's all natural it goes against um, the laws it goes against the laws of nature um, and that's just a simple fact furthermore since they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of the universal God he gave them over to a deprived mind so therefore they also focus on the mind and the heart they said their soul to do what ought not to be done they have become filled with every kind of wickedness evil greed and depravity which is what humanity is doing right now all their own selfish desires and their own personal beliefs of what God is to them you know this is where you know you put the simple facts that 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 this is what you believe in this is what I believe in this is a selfish act as well because you know people have their own personal belief structures and totally avoid the real reality of what nature is what natural is and what um, natural order and natural laws are universally um, it it totally goes against that so anybody who says they have their own personal belief or what they view as God is is um, falling into their own uh, shameful acts of the heart and the mind and again it might get blasted for it but you just have to do your research on it so and this most of this stuff says it's written in Romans um, so you can check that out um, furthermore since they did not think worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God he gave them over to a deprived mind to do what ought not to be done they have became filled with every kind of wickedness evil greed and depravity they are full of envy murder strife um, just like Cain the one who um, began this whole thing because of his evil thoughts and desires that he was the Messiah um, murder strife deceit and malice they are gossip gossipers um, slanderers God haters insolent arrogant and boastful and you know arrogant also comes into play on you know when you talk to people about um, you know going against nature uh, their own personal beliefs you know they are arrogant you know they are are lying they are lying to themselves based on their own mind and their own heart they they invent ways of doing evil evil they disobey their parents they are senseless faithless heartless ruthless although they know God's righteous decree to those who do such things deserve death they not only continue to do these very things but they also approve of those who practice them and you know that's where where you know you see these whole groups gathering together is oh we believe in this so let's group together we believe in this let's group together that group we don't believe believe in so we're gonna hate that group but we're gonna stick with this group you know it's 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 still dividing the thing the essence the essence of Cain is right there the mark of Cain is right there their own lusts and desires of what they perceive God or what their belief structure is is still dividing them when the natural order of 
God, the universal God, is surrounding you daily. God is invisible. You know, there is no, there is no words that you have to describe things. It's just a natural fact and order of life. You know, you just have to look at how things are in nature. That's why it's important to pay attention to nature and see how nature takes care of itself. You know, see on how, you know, I got birds in my yard right now. They are by instinct gathering what nature gives them. You know, they eat off of, of the insects and, you know, they'll eat whatever they need to eat. You know, they go with nature. Um, everything is with nature. Um, and nature can also show you um, the wrongfulness of nature which you know you'll see animals attack animals and kill animals kill flesh it's a representation of of the beast state of humanity um and that's something you need to also look at too nature will tell you everything of what is right with how the world should be in nature and what is wrong with how humanity is going um anyways i can get very deep um, so yeah so if you're not following the laws of nature and you're against the laws of nature um, then you're following your own uh, belief structure and heart and mind's desire instead of the soul so that's, that's pretty much what I want to talk to you about I found it rather interesting and I think this really kind of gets the um, point across is that you know a lot of humanity actually about probably 90% of humanity is under the the laws of the heart and mind instead of the soul um, they all follow their own belief structures of generations past and they follow their own own ways of oh I was born this way I was born that way um, it is this way um, there's no way of of looking at it you know things things like that you know that it's really has blinded um, humanity it really has and very very few are gonna ever really understand that um, and that's just how it is. That's why research is key, and that's why I make videos to help you guys do research. And I think that's pretty much all I'm going to read because it it continues on. This is quite an interesting page here. Um. So yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and end this video because I'm sure it's pretty long already. Yeah, real long. So um, if you got any questions, let me know. If you want to bash me, you can bash me. Whatever. Um. But, you know, if you're going to write, make sure it makes sense. You know, what what do you not agree with and why does it not agree with you? And, um, and take what was in this video to the message that you're trying to write. You know, because the answer is already in this video. It's just up to you if you discover that answer. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video. Um, yeah, so love yourself. Keep shining bright listen to your soul and not your heart or your mind um, and that's something that like I said is very hard for humanity to even even fathom that idea um, because everybody's all about love 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 but like I said you need to focus on the soul not the word love because you, that love is going to fall into the selfish desires of humanity which therefore is the heart and the mind but if you focus on the soul say focus on the soul it's going to go more into the divine nature of things and natural law of order of the universal laws of my yacht and Kemet, so on and so forth. So do your own research, and that's all i got to say. So talk to you in a little bit.